the interesting thing about ignorance is we don't we know we're grasping passion the three poisons passion aggression and ignorance we can see the we can see that we can see that we're grasping or going after something or lusting after something or desiring something we're just simply wanting that as opposed to that different levels of desire and those are just a few of them there's all kinds of nuance there and we can see that when we attack or cut down or chop or kill or end something uh, with uh, some kind of aggressive um, movement or activity, we can, it's obvious we're doing it. It's obvious when others are doing it. Not quite so obvious when we're shutting down or diverting or distracting ourselves from what is actually happening in front of us into what we think is happening or what is safer to perceive about what is happening. This mechanism that has been going on for since beginningless time, millions of years in human beings, is, I, I don't know if it's impossible, but it's near impossible to trace that because it's too complicated. That doesn't mean that it isn't occurring and it isn't, it's like, it's like a, a, a gigantic pool table with a, Count, you can't, there's a number that goes high enough to count all the balls that are bouncing off from each other in that. Yeah. Just to be just that kind of a situation. Please turn off your mic if you have it on. And so the idea here is to observe that so that when you, the idea with sitting meditation is you sit down, you hold still, and you observe, and you get to see your own personal, this is not ego, but it's just your body mind, the sensorium, the body mind complex, the particular. Uh, uh, the particular, shall I say it in a romantic way, the particular eternal spirit that has embodied for this lesson plan. Might not be exactly a lesson plan, but that's a metaphor for it. So here you are, go to school, learn this, understand this, go into this, use the Buddhist teaching as it is presented, I'm doing my best, having studied it for a few years, to use the, Buddha, the teaching of the Buddha's Dharma to sit down and, and see what this is, see what it is that he was pointing at so many centuries ago. Everything is dependently risen, no matter how intense the self-centeredness feels, uh, it, is, it is unreal. It, it has a reality, but it's, uh, it's dependent on otherness, on apparent otherness for its substantiality as something. And so the, the ignorant perception is a, is a partial. It's a, it is a selective, it has favorites, and, it, and is, it does not want to see some things. Now, this is what people protect themselves with their beliefs and their opinions. If they have some kind of a, of a, of a some being drawn into a, what we call the spiritual path, out of the mundane path of grasping and rejecting and fighting and making peace and all of that stuff, then it may be the theistic approach, of course, is to assume there's some higher power. We're not saying they're not, but uh, uh, another word for belief is assumption. I'm not taking anything away from someone who's a religious, whatever religious path. I, I, I would not, if they came and uh, even said to me, which they probably wouldn't, but do you think I should be doing what you're doing? I would say absolutely not. And not only absolutely not, but relatively not. Do live your life. Be the, be the person you need to be. Believe in whatever or do whatever you want to do. That's, that's up to you. <clears throat> but if you're sitting here listening to this person, then you might want to consider this approach to it, which is about awareness, not about what arises in awareness, not about what is arising. Interestingly enough, though, the way you find out about the awareness is to watch what arises because the illusion of duality is intense and it's in quantitats. Sorry if you don't get the good joke. <laughs> I get very bored sometimes and there's sometimes there's only certain things I can laugh at. And that happens in my mind stream. How about you guys? Sit down, hold still, look at the wall and discover your natural sense of humor sense of humor is like space. Whatever shows up in it and then turns over, it's quite humorous because it looked like this, but then it became that. So this is a, the secret of the comedians is to 
in, 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 what, uh, seduce you to come on to a particular rug and then pull. <laughs> Same also happens with a Dharma teacher, with some of them anyway. So each person, each person has to see the way they personally are obstructing or shutting down on something. And that takes a while because you have to look at the very closed door that looks like openness to the ego. It just looks like, well, this is true. This is what I believe. But if you look at what is there without pushing, without pulling, when I say without pushing, I mean objecting to it or chasing it away or trying not to have that particular wall of the mind. Or the other way is through, uh, that's through aggression. Then through passion is to explain it. Um, why is it happening? To do anything with it other than just observe. And then the third way is the most difficult one, which is to just distract yourself from it. But if you've gotten yourself to the cushion, uh, you've gone a long way to working with the, the, the basic difficulty of the three poisons, which is ignorance. It's possible to deal with uh, passion and aggression in a more direct way, but it's very, very difficult to deal with ignorance in a way other than just observing that wall. And it will just look like a wall. It won't look like an obstruction. The nature of ignorance is to have no particular identity except distraction or shutting down or closing off or uh, making yourself blind, you could say. And the way this shows up with each person has its own particular nuance, own particular characteristics, color, tone, shape, texture, um, energy, energy movement back and forth or solidifying or back and forth or solidifying. Maybe you just solidify. That might be your style. Another style is to just continually shift back and forth, back and forth, and keep that going by keep looking for right and wrong. We get seduced into, well, you have to know right from wrong. I'm happy to, re to respond to any questions about this. Please, when I say come and get me, I'm saying don't hesitate. If you have questions about this, if you think you, you know something about this, bring it this way. If you think that I'm mistaken or I'm... Uh, unsure I'm kind of projecting some kind of belief in something. Um, come on, you wanna follow somebody? Follow this person and you're gonna end up all by yourself. Which not, might not be a bad idea. <laughs> I'll take some questions or I can keep talking either way. Carl Bond. Carl. When I label something, let's call it restlessness, it can help me focus it, focus on it or observe it in a way that I might not be able to if I did not somehow label it. Can, can that sort of labeling, that, I guess that's a like a ignorant perception, can that be useful on the path? Uh, so my, as I understand what you're saying, if I do, uh, I would just say, just continue. It's just a matter of repetition. Just repeat, just come back. This is what, why it's called training is because you're actually looking at something and the feeling of not getting it or not getting it right. That's how it feels to be in the second grade and look at a bunch of glyphs on a blackboard. They don't have no idea what they mean, So you have to start somewhere. And I'm just using that metaphorically, uh, uh, fundamentally, it could show up lots of different ways, but that the way you're addressing it, I, uh, I don't think you're having any difficulty with perception. You just are per you just are perceiving what you think it is. And you can't stop that. You can't change it. The very nature of, of trying to change that is, is uh, uh, spiritual materialism or material materialism or mundane materialism. And there are techniques Oh, so, and they're not wrong. I mean, they, they, they work relatively, <clears throat> but they don't work ultimately. What do I mean is you're not going to live forever. And so that's why the spiritual path is there. If we didn't, if we didn't have a uh, 
if we never died, you know, if the body never went down, it might be a different story. Perhaps not, but it could be. But all you have to do is persist. I've talked to you enough that I know uh, all you have to do is continue to do it. Do a lot of it. Get Dr. Bob Holman. Get one of these. Oh, this is really heavy. These four-hour glasses. Well, you don't have to have one, but it helps because then, then you can't cheat. There's no way you can get the sand up there to come down there. I mean, you could, when it's halfway, turn it over, but then that would make you sit more, so that's not going to work. No. So sit down, hold still, just observe. Whatever shows up is what you need to look at. Even if it's if it's your mind chatters, this happens, and then you complain to yourself, oh, here I go again, and so on. Of course, I would say, don't add, but it's not about not adding so much as if I rather than I say, don't add. And then you notice how every time something comes up, you have a comment on it. And then you notice that you can't quite stop that commenting. That's awareness. It's awareness about the difficulty, about the obstruction, about the wall. Please don't try to get rid of anything. You, you don't fight with dependent origination and don't agree with it and don't ignore it. Those are the three. If you have questions about that, come this way. Cause I'm bowing. Um, to Carl, you said perception of what you think it is. And sometimes you say perception only. How can you back into just perceiving? Uh, you can, you might be able to back into it a little bit if you've been sitting for 10, 12 years, maybe regularly. Unlikely to happen right away, but everyone's karma is a little bit different. Some people. Uh, have lived in monasteries in the 14th century and haven't done anything since then. But here they are again. This doesn't mean they haven't been a, a, a cattle farmer in Utah in the 18th century. Probably. Causes and conditions are undiscoverable and untraceable and uncontrollable. And they can take you an anywhere. It doesn't matter. A 14th century might sound like a long time ago. It's not even about time. That's an illusion. And it's a really powerful and just like embodiment is a really powerful illusion so the direct perception is just to continue to look at the way you keep shutting down it's awareness see the way in which you grasp the way in which you you uh um are aggressive the way in which you close off which takes time it, it takes repetition it takes hold the body still so you minimize the whole minimize the whole thing so that you're so that there is more of a possibility that the the perceiving aspect of consciousness uh, begins to slowly start to see just what moves, just what's arising rather than what it thinks is arising or protecting the perceiver from some kind of threat of, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to feel that. I don't want this emotion, this opinion, this feeling, this discovery, this loss, this conclusion, on and on. Take me deeper. Take us deeper if you want to go deeper into that. I sometimes say, I, I talk out of what I see, not of what I know. I can't remember anything. Much, a few things maybe. Sometimes my memory works uh, in, in, in concert with or in, de in, in dependency upon everything else around me, including you guys, including uh, Uno, including the, the bookshelf, including my fingertips. Past and present are no longer uh, as concepts, they're there and they're worked with relatively. If they come up, then I'm all about 10, we got 10 minutes to go. Or we've got to get hooked up to this, or then I'm all about that. But there's no, there's no more glue. <clears throat> no, <clears throat> there is no more glue there. So therefore, uh, and the uh, ego mind needs some kind of continuity to know that there's somebody living a life that is valuable, that is supportive, that is kind or benevolent or getting somewhere or powerful or in control and uh, uh, awakened uh, mind. And I'm not making any claims. I'm not making, I'm not claiming to be any different than anybody or to be special. Uh, and the only way I teach, the only way I know I can teach is I have students. The students go away, uh, then there's no teaching happening other than the only, the only one student that can't go away. And that's this one.
Junshu bowing. There's a question from Benjamin Swartout. Yes, Benjamin. He asks, where are we going? Good question. You're not going anywhere. I mean, uh, the, the question is valid relatively. You know, we're, we're going towards a sickness, aging, and death, to be, put it literally. Not, not nihilistic, it's just, just the truth. I mean, body, mind, like we don't know anybody that's lived more than, what, 120 or something like that years? So we're going there. But if you want to know where we're going uh, in terms of the Buddha's Dharma, we're going in circles. It's called samsara. And we've been doing this. And, and don't, I'm not, I want to say this before I even make this next statement. Do not even try to believe me. I'm not promoting this. I don't believe it. I don't believe what I'm about to say. I don't need to believe it because I know it. I know it. I see, I see it. I see it. Should I say that again? I see it. I see, what do I see? Circles. <laughs> or as Unyo pronounces them, kirkles. Around and around, around. Life, and it's, there, it's everywhere. There's a metaphor for this everywhere. Night and day, night and day, night and day. Sun and moon, sun and moon, sun and moon. Eating and then the other, the other, the other end of it. Around and around and around and around and around and around. And then the ego mind tries to make use of that circularity to squeeze some kind of happiness out of it. Very difficult to squeeze. I don't see any really, really young people here. So you probably spent some time trying to figure out a way to squeeze happiness out of this relative situation you've been dropped into, probably from the relative point of view, choicelessly, choicelessly, and from the ultimate point of view, exactly where you need to be. You're exactly on the path. If you turn to the path, it's only I mean, you're already uh, you've already turned to the path. You're listening listening to the identity that I uh, that was given to me is as a Dharma teacher. Who gave me this? I don't know. Everybody did. Was on Seems like we uh, we hear about the teachings of no self or that realization of no self, but at yeah. the same time we're terrorized of not existing, yeah. and that fear is probably deeper than we realize. So how can we work with the fear that goes so opposite under the radar of what we're trying to see? Well. I it looks like it's just being persistent with it. Uh, the, the fear is going to come and go. Just continue. Just don't give up. If you try to push it away or cover it up or something, then it makes a, a different kind of circle or a, a more vague or a more it goes into the dark and comes back. Where as a uh, spiritual path is about seeing the truth, seeing seeing the ultimate truth fundamentally for yourself, not just something you believe in. If someone says, uh, what do Buddhists believe? Uh, depends on who to ask it, but uh, I might say either not much, or I might say, what do you mean by belief? I might find out what, what the structure is. In other words, communication. What, what, when you're communicating with somebody, what is it they're actually looking for when they ask you a question? So what my, my response to you, if I understand your question, uh, in your situation especially, but in others, probably, just repetition, just train your mind, just get to the cushion, schedule yourself, because samsara is not going to support this. That's why we have a monastery for those who are really, really sincere and serious and find that living uh, somewhere else. We've had people move into the monastery. We've had people move out. We've had people move in, move out, and move right back in. Not many, but some, because they see that mm, it might be better to live there where there's some kind of a structure that uh, that helps you, supports you, training your mind. When you're, when you're bowing, so based on Kozan's question there, is no self non-existence? Um, well, it's a concept, and it's uh, it could show up that way to some extent conceptually. 
but it's uh, the, the self, no self just means that there's no attachment to the self rather than thinking that the actor on the stage is a real person with a, which we tend to feel if we're watching a play, we start to identify with it. if it's a really good play and if it's really good acting, we get magnetized by that and actually start to, shows you how, how mutable and how porous the identity is that you can watch a movie and actually fall into identification with, with the character. And a good example of that is if somebody is about to be murdered or, or if someone is thrown into a, into a dark cell or buried alive, we start, we can identify that. We don't sit back and say, I'm fine, you know, because of that's what, and it's for some strange reason, and it isn't actually a reason, and it's not even strange. We're entertained by that kind of fear. Some people love horror movies. And other people, like you, don't want to watch our horror movies. It's too close to what might be the case. More? So it's both real and unreal. A, 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 a play is both real because we're magnetized by it. We're, you know, we're eating our popcorn and we're looking. And sometimes it might be so difficult we actually have to avert our gaze because it's just too intense to watch that. Even though it's imaginary, it's made up, it's not even real. It might be easier to actually watch something right in front of us that's actually happening because the dependent origination that happens when it's your actual eyes on a topic or on a subject that is being hurt uh, might be more intense in, in terms of reality. When I say reality, the actual situation of dependent origination rather than your, your supposition or your... your uh, um, your ignoring style of perception, which goes into the movie and and knows it's protected, so therefore it can indulge in identification. Follow me? You can't indulge in identification if somebody's being murdered in front of you. Not that I've seen that happen, but I've I've been in a room where people have died in front of me. And, and it's a different kind of dynamic there when it's that close. More? Thank you, Is there another word you can use for when you see something is real or unreal um. so it is uh, it is unreal in that you believe in this and disbelieve in that and you're caught in the in the net of what's called indra's net you're caught in up and down back and forth right and wrong should be shouldn't be buddhas and sentient beings enlightenment and, and delusion and all the polarities life and death is the that's the big Kind of scary one if you let yourself look at it a little while. Excuse me. Uh, That's a what was the last part reality. It, just the definition of of real and unreal. Real real is something that does not uh, uh, appear and does not go away. Uh, sometimes the fancy Western word for it is eternal. More and unreal. Unreal is. Uh, relatively real it shows up and then relative because it's compounded then goes away and then comes back again and then it goes away night day night day unreal relatively very real and so we're not so we're not about ignoring that that's what you're actually doing when you sit down and face the wall or when you study the, uh, the dharma especially with sangha with people who are all looking at this from different different uh, tributary streams flowing in the darkness appearing in the, the light of a particular dharma uh, coming together, people coming together and noticing how difficult, difficult it is to take conceptual ideas about the nature of ultimate truth and study them together. It's not only difficult, <clears throat> but it's all, it's all, it is also magnetizing in that you feel there's some kind of support happening there for your, uh, for your more solitary your solitary retreat or your you're wall gazing when you're totally by yourself. It tends to start to inform that area, to make that be, um, just be supportive of that uh, singular awareness practice more. Any questions? Does anyone know, are, are people able to view this on YouTube? I don't have any picture here. They can hear you. They just can't see you. Okay. I, I think uh, I would, could I blame you for this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unio is using her computer and of course it's not a Mac. So you have to, it's, you have to do all your thinking when you're on a PC, 
which is pretty good because you don't have you know those things jumping in the way and telling you what to do but she forgot when she started up i saw her actually miss it i actually witnessed your mistake <laughs> i saw her abandon because she knows that macbooks actually help you with that they fill in those gaps uh, that we used to think where there used to be intelligence there and it fills it in with what to do next you missed it <laughs> i really missed it <laughs> so you guys on youtube <laughs> like uh what was your friend's name i didn't do anything wrong yeah marion used to say her her friend marion i didn't do anything wrong <laughs> yeah me neither or me neither show going you yes you brought up that uh like that movie example of identifying with something like that and yes i seem to show up or recognize the opposite where I have a hyper objectifying quality where I don't really relate to that at all. And that shows up in my relationships with people. I noticed that. That's why your whole style is uh, is ignorance. If you don't mind me saying <laughs> you're a transmitted priest, so and you're a student of mine, so I can I get to teach you directly in front of everybody, and that way you can deal with your own what embarrassment. Your style is, uh, and there's several different styles, and we don't have to go into all of those, but is is to shut down on things. <clears throat> and this is the penalty they arisen, but we don't need to go back and find out what your dad said to you when you were four years old that caused you to start functioning that way, because he didn't really cause it, and you didn't really, uh, uh, it didn't really occur to you in a sense of the, the, the Shoto, uh, you know, wasn't able to deal with that, so started to shut down. So it's not about somebody made a mistake. It's just a matter of dependent origination. It's this causes that, causes that, causes that. This happens and that happens. This happens. And only it's, it's innumerable comings and goings of relative truth uh, within, the, within the, you could say, framework of the ultimate. But And the only way you can see the ultimate is to watch the relative come and go, to put it very simply and almost uh, scientifically, and don't add to it. Just just be be a minimalist. Keep it very simple, very direct. Whatever shows up, if if something shows up and you feel edgy about it or, or upset about it, then that's just more dependent origination. That's not necessarily a reaction to it. What's a reaction to it? If something shows up and you start to get afraid, that's part of it. And the reaction is part of dependent origination, but then you're moving in there to try to stop it or chatter about it to yourself or talk to anyone about it. Other than if you have a teacher, other than your teacher, you probably should bring it up to that person if it seems appropriate. But you can't get rid of, of ignorance. And, but that's a good, you, you actually flipped it. And that's, that's a very accurate description of what's happening in your mind stream. The, the downside is it's difficult. The upside is you're aware of that. Or you couldn't you couldn't describe that. You couldn't take my example and flip it around and say, I just do the opposite. And I would say you're very accurate there. It's not a, it's not a compliment. I don't compliment anyway. But I might I might describe things, and that's what I was doing. I was describing that as you're one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, and I hope to see more of you. How'd that feel? Hello, <laughs> Bowing. <laughs> So when I'm interacting with someone, I'm not going to answer my question. I said, how does that feel? <laughs> how does it feel? Hey, I, I really don't know. I rest my case right on your head. Good. Please keep coming. You can go into your question and I'll stop uh, uh, putting uh, trip wires in your path. So when I'm interacting with someone directly and and I can see that I've just kind of put a, a barrier between me and, and their sadness or their difficulty, is there a way to begin to relate with them? You're doing fine, really. Don't do anything else. You're already doing it. Just don't push, don't pull, don't modify. You're already fully, as of November 18th of last year, you're already fully ordained as a Buddhist monk. That's a pretty strong commitment to make. So that just return to the vow. 
save all beings, but don't set up some kind of standard about how that's to look or how that's to be done. You're going to get less and less credentials as you go along. And finally, there'll be the, the final disappointment. There's no credentials at all. Just this, just this, which is not uh, no longer an individual and no longer is it uh, a bunch of individuals. There's no, there's no solid self in this context. No form, feeling, perception, concept, consciousness. There's no solid being, but the illusion is outrageously brilliant. Take away the illusion. What do you have? Brilliance. <laughs> I don't want to give away too many secrets here. Cheryl bowing. Something that seems to show up with, um, if, if that guard or that ignorance isn't there, the the thing that does show up is like anger or a really short temperedness what's what's that about that's just what the ignorance is covering up it's just a, a intense dissatisfaction i can say it to say it uh you know more literally so at some point or points there's been intense uh, abuse of this particular consciousness we're calling shoto intense abuse and it and it you you know you could say you were defenseless we could go back and we could find a story about it we go back to the ninth century bc and see when you were oh no that was when you were thrown into a volcano uh we can see when you when you were abused not just in this life when you were put upon in some way and it's, uh, and didn't have anything to do other than shut down on it is that true nah doesn't mean to be true relative truth is is totally mailable so there's no, there's no way, like this old man is not sitting here trying to decide, uh, how do I look uh, intelligent or enlightened? Or, I don't need to do that because, you got, you, because I'm completely covered with your projections. You stop projecting on me, you won't see anyone. I'm not saying you won't see a physical form. So I would say just, you're, you're already doing it, just keep going. But thank you for that question because it gives me, gives us the opportunity mutually to discuss that, that particular dynamic that's happening with you. And we've talked about that many times. This is a, kind of the closest we come to seeing how, what, how that flips around. More questions about that if you have it. And for, from anybody else also, that's an interesting area that the way ignorance works, ignorant perception. I'm Jason Bowling. I don't have a question about the um, ignorance, but I was wondering what is dependent origination dependent on? On itself. Uh, this causes that things get warm, other things cool down, uh, sun shines on a plant, it grows, uh, the, 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 the roots that are going into the ground is a very simple example. Uh, it's a very natural hierarchy that is happening all the time. You, you don't put the roots of a tree in the air and the leaves underground, it won't work. It has to be a natural hierarchy. And uh, this kind of hierarchy of the teacher and the students does not work unless there's intense, I mean intense cooperation. That doesn't mean you have to be cooperative. And I'm, I'm not saying there's an identity of someone who's cooperative. That's, that's, that's more like the mundane path of uh, trying to get somewhere, trying to be somebody. There needs to be, uh, look at nature, isn't it amazing? Look at your own body. I mean, especially uh, people who like uh, Dr. Hirsch, who, who's uh, here somewhere. I don't know, there's so many people on the screen, I don't know where he's at, but uh, he, he's uh, a doctor and other people here are nurses and people who work with physical uh, situations. It's pretty astonishing the way the body, without anybody coming in and doing anything with it, other than doctors and um, people who, try to tell you about your health and quite often are mistaken about what to do about it. But it's just isn't it astonishing that this whole thing works and, uh, and we take it for granted. You know, uh, I have a sore arm. Oh, well, that's your rotator cuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there's no, there's no, you can't do anything about that. Okay. It's amazing. Look around you, look in the mirror. As I sometimes say, go look in the mirror for 10 minutes. Who the hell is that? What is that? What is that fundamentally? What is peeking out of those eyes? What is that? 
Well, look, look at it. Look, look at the wall. Do the same thing at the wall. What is that? And who's looking at it? Who and what? Who and what? Duality. An, an intense grasping at the structure of relative truth and thinking this is real. And this is where the suffering comes from. The Buddha said, as far as we know, the first words out of his mouth is life, being a living being with nerve endings and being downloaded into this uh, particular uh, uh, huge bowl of petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly. Well, it's, it's like that kind of a thing. You can't really, you can't really get any orientation because everything's so gooey. It, it looks like, and sometimes that's thought of, thought of as lack of control. And then we, what do we want? We want to get control. We need to have control. We need to get a degree. We need to make have a good job. We need to have a very good family. We need to, we need to, we need to, we need to. And not that we shouldn't, but we are so magnetized by relative truth that you can you can miss the spiritual path altogether. Any other questions? I, I can't see the chat box, so I don't have no idea. Well, there were there were eight, was ten people on YouTube, and uh, two of them was left. So, Junshu, we, we can stop if you want. Junshu, go ahead. Another question from Benjamin Swordout. Yes, Benjamin. How would, in quotes, we shall feast on joy from the Dhammapada 15th chapter, work with non-ignorant perception? Uh, you're covering up the joy because you want relative joy. You want joy that doesn't go away. And it's a constant struggle in samsara trying to stay happy. People sometimes resort to drugs because they get some kind of artificial, because that whole area of the mind is so porous, we can fill it with stuff. I know, I did a bunch of that myself a long time ago. It doesn't last. And sometimes it can turn into terror just because you're meddling around, messing around with something that is none of your business. And it's not that it isn't your business, but there's no you that has any business being there as uh, some kind of manipulating, you know, trying to make your mind do this, make your mind do that. People do it with everything. They do it with everything, everything from aspirin to uh, ayahuasca. Go ahead. But you might want to consider just being radical. Sit down, you have everything you need. The Buddha didn't have anything but his hands and his butt and his knees and his eyes and his, his body-mind complex. He sat down and he saw what this was. And he was generous enough to share it with a few people and they shared it with somebody else. The next thing you know, other people were interested and it came out of that. He didn't go out and promote some kind of brotherhood of the Buddha or something. It just showed up. So the idea there is if it's not about some kind of artificial uh, don't enjoy yourself or don't, uh, you know, uh, some kind of manipulation so you can get into the ultimate realization, which is, uh, which is this profound bliss or joy. Joy or bliss is being pointed to there is not about relative happiness. Relative happiness comes and goes. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. As Trung Parampache said in his Sadhana of Mahamudra, happy and sad, good and bad, happy and sad, all thoughts vanish into em emptiness like the imprint of a bird in the sky. So, and also he said that uh, pain and pleasure are, have become ornaments, which it is pleasant to wear. So how can it be pleasant to wear pain and suffering? How, how can that be pleasant? Relatively, it can't be. But ultimately, and this is why you is sometimes called a revolution at the basis of consciousness or at the Ale Vijnana. So I, I don't know if it's an actual revolution. I use that because uh, it seems to be okay. But it is actual, actual a turning about at the basis where there seems to be some kind of a some kind of a, a relative but intense and ongoing gravitas we call me, me, 
and my ideas and what I think, what I like and what I don't like. If you want to live that way, go ahead. I won't stop you. I won't even, I won't even get in the way of your way at all. I might listen to you, but I'm not going to argue with that. I've had, I've met people who are, they don't might not do this kind of a melodramatic thing that I'm doing here, but I'm just trying to emphasize that because we do feel incredibly tight. And how do we let go of that? Watch the way you hang on. You can't artificially just let go. You have to see the way you grip it and it can be difficult and painful. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. What else? What, what, you know, I'm not going to say, what do you got to lose? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, what else are you going to do? Just keep climbing the ladder, trying to get somewhere? So this... Uh, this feast that uh, has been referred to here is uh, sometimes it's called uh, um, Mahasuka, the great bliss. And it's, it's, it's the great bliss because it's not, it doesn't come and go. It comes up and it, it, it no longer has any credentials of right and wrong, up and down, back and forth, awake and diluted. It's, it's not separate from anything anymore. You have transcended your personal self and still you have had a you have transcended your the personhood uh, and you have transcended this world and you're still in it, in it, looking for something to eat or some place to take a dump. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying it's a relative kind of thing that continues. You're not going to feel special. It is called my teacher, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, called it Buddha Dharma or awakened truth, awakened truth without credentials, with no proof. I didn't need anybody to come along and thump me on the head with this to say, okay, you now can teach. Although we do that in the tradition because it's a structure that allows the tradition to continue. But just because someone is wearing this or is a, appears as a so-called transmitted priest, listen to them. I mean, there are people teaching who, who are, who are um, uh, novice monks. There are people teaching who are Maybe not monks at all, who are speaking the truth, if there's anyone to listen. Not many, but some. Yuhong Baling. Go ahead, Yuhong. What's the definition of bliss? Sorry, back to the bliss. What's the definition? It's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it is a, an awareness of the comings and goings of, of the relative world. Pain and pleasure up and down, back and forth, taste good, taste terrible, all the different uh, sour and sweet and all those things coming and going, coming and going. And a fundamental, uh, uh, um, uh, it's not a contentment, so to speak, but it's a, a fundamental, not separate from anything. Everything is your child. Everything is your mother. Everything is your father. It's just one incredibly vast and complete uh, family of 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 otherness that shows up as not separate. So the bliss there is, is not an emotion, it's not feeling, just like compassion is not sympathy. Compassion could be, sometimes there, there's, uh, there's called, like uh, uh, Trunk Burn, but they call grandmother's compassion, where you just feel really sorry and you just baby everything so it'll feel better because you're more concerned about not being around somebody who's miserable. So you're trying to get them to stop acting that way. Like having an outrageously crazy two-year-old. Difficult to be around, but that child is going through whatever they need to go through. And the karma that they came out of, they're just doing their very best. So the, the best thing you could do is protect them. Uh, if you got to put in some earplugs, do it. The very difficult area to work with because you're, deal they're, you're dealing now with what your parents had to deal with, only your version of what they were dealing with. I'm saying that to you because I know you're a mom and I know you have some difficulty, like all mothers and fathers do with their young people. Just protect them and uh, do it that way. So you're a good example of training right there. You got you love your children, and also they, not you, but they're they're difficult. So it's a very you have the perfect opportunity to be a student of those incredible teachers called children. Bye. My second question is, uh, can ignorance arise with passion 
or a question or both? Sorry, the or questions. Oh, no, that's good. Uh, uh, it's the three poisons. The three ways we avoid reality are, are passion or grasping, uh, aggression or pushing, and ignorance or shutting down. And yes, they're always interacting. Sometimes it's mostly, uh, you, you really can't have just one. One of them will be the main uh, function, the main activity of, of something that's actually occurring in some way. But yes, they're all mixed together. And, it, and, and I wouldn't even bother. Uh, and, and I would even say, don't, don't sort them out. It's not about figuring out how much of this and how much uh, 50 percent of passion, 22 percent of ignorance. It's not about doing that, although there might be something available there, but just more circles. Sit down, be direct, very direct, very accurate, very strong physical forms. Sit down, hold still, but don't be rigid. Don't maintain it. Get up and move if you need to. Pay attention to how your body feels. But then your intention is to train your mind so you would continue to come back and continue to gaze at the wall and sharpen your awareness so that when passion and aggression arise either in you or in others or in the world around you or in your situation, you're clear about that and you, and you as much as you can, you don't interact or stop it or, or try to modify it or change it. You are respected of uh, respect uh, relative truth as much as you can with, without allowing somebody to torture somebody else. You don't do that. If somebody, uh, like an example I quite often use because it's fairly simple. You may have seen this happen where somebody starts abusing an animal or, or even abusing a child. If you, it's pretty difficult. But what do you do? You're in, the, you're in the grocery store these days. It wouldn't happen so much because of COVID, but you're in the grocery store and you see somebody just thrashing a child. That's incredibly uh, difficult to, to witness. And, and you, here again, situational. You may go in and just stop it. You may, and you may not. You may, uh, you may just have to walk away. You may not be able to watch that. But if, you, if you, but if you're seeing that, my recommendation, if you want to hear it, is don't do anything. Don't do anything more. Don't do anything extra. Just observe. If you're just observing that, then that, that brings a, someone who is uh, abusing someone else does not want to be witnessed. They prefer you walk away. They pr prefer, and they don't want, and if you interfere with them, they're going to fight back because they feel justified in what they're doing because they're, they're fighting off their own craziness by taking it out on a, a young person. You know, it's a simple thing to say. How do you deal with that? It's dependently arisen. This, this might have been going on with this particular two people or two consciousnesses or two sovereign entities, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Do I believe in uh, reincarnation? I don't believe in anything particularly nor do I disbelieve in it. Fine. Thank yes. you. I have another question. Are there, yeah, are there different categories of ignorance, different kinds of ignorance? Um, yeah, there's, there's, a, I mean, there's all kinds of versions of it, just, I, just to name a, a few. There's the distracting, distraction kind where you're looking at something that you, you just don't want to, you don't even know that you're distracting. It's like listening to someone that you really don't want to listen to because you're, you're tired of listening to them and you'll change the subject. You'll, you'll say, and you might not do it intentionally, you just might have had enough of listening to that person do whatever they're doing and just uh, look at something else or say, I've got to go or uh, so the different ways of doing it. And you can also look right at someone and ignore what they're saying by as you're, as you're listening to them uh, and analyzing and judging what they're saying without really receiving it, as soon as it shows up, you immediately have opinions and ideas about them being uh, stupid or ignorant or uh, bigoted or any number of things could come up. And it's not that they aren't relatively true. They could be relatively true. You could say, well, look what they just said. Of course, they're, they're uh, prejudiced. But everyone is prejudiced in some way. Everyone. I'm an old white man, so I know what my prejudices are. Very similar to all old white men in this country. It's just that I don't believe them. You don't have to get rid of prejudice. Just don't give it any 
allow it to come and go, but don't give it any uh, validation or any thumbs up. And so there's that level. There's there's uh, uh, using uh, uh, your maybe your board, which is a, a form of aware uh, that shows up in awareness when entertainment level is dropping way down, and you don't like you want entertainment. You want something happening because otherwise, then you start to get anxious about things in your life you've been able to what ignore. So you'll you'll ignore continue to ignore, uh, but not by uh, some kind of shutting down, but some kind of uh, uh, rotating around into something that's entertaining, entertaining. That's one of the things you notice about sitting practice of meditation or shikantaza, uh, as Trungpa Rinpoche would talk about it, saying there's there's a, um, there's a hot boredom, which is when you first start sitting, it's difficult to stay there and, and you want to get up and you want to go away and you're tired of your, your mind stream chattering all the time and you get just uh, bored with it. But if you stay there long enough, eventually that mountain stream tumbling down through the rocks it starts to level out like the mouth of a river, like the, the mouth, the headwaters, or not the headwaters, but the, the open uh, um, where, the, where the Amazon or, or, or goes into uh, the ocean. So it's very, very deep and very level and undisturbed. And your meditation becomes cool boredom. You're still bored. You're still... Uh, so maybe you'd like to have something else happening, but the cool boredom is uh, sometimes some people describe it as kind of luxurious. Fine, I don't have any, I don't have to do anything. Uh, after all this sitting, I can just sit, hold my seat and just sit. Sometimes when this starts to happen, people get wonder if they're doing something wrong. Are they going to sleep? Are they going? And I would say, I can tell you right now what to do. If you're sitting and you're doing that, uh, I'll give you a checklist. Am I holding still? Check. Are my eyes open? Check. Am I endeavoring to just observe what move, what's moving? Check. That's it. There's three of them. If you're doing that, regardless of what's happening, this is the sitting practice of meditation as I teach it. And it's not as other people might teach it. Other people might want to fluff it up with more stuff. Further question? Uh, I'm take another one. Yeah, we, we could take another question. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Johan. Bye. Uh, if you are aware that you are ignore something, very aware, is that ignorance too? The awareness of... Mm -hmm. Well, it could be if you're getting a credential about, I'm so aware of that. I'm very aware of it, so I don't have to stop doing it or change it. So I, I think it's a... That gets to be very personal, and this uh, this understanding of an either or uh, is this ignorance or is it this or this, rather than getting from this teaching person, you might want to just spend time uh, facing the wall. I'm not going to ask you how, how much you sit, but you know, try to sit for at least an hour a day, if not more. Try to do some block sitting. Talk to Bob Holman. Get one of these <laughs> glasses. I don't know where he got it at. I don't want to go on the four hour glass business, so. But yeah, it's it, it just, you know, if the way you said that tells me that you're doing exactly what you need to do, just be aware of it. I wouldn't go in and fiddle with it or try to be a better person. No, uh, you'll hear me say, don't improve. I mean, if things start to feel better, or lighter, then enjoy yourself. If they get worse, then uh, just look at that. But don't, don't meddle with the situation too much. A little bit, and if you're sitting on a cushion and it's uncomfortable, move to a chair. If it's too, uh, if it's too dark in the room, turn on a light. If it's too light in the room, turn the light off. Don't sit in the dark. Uh, if you're doing shikantaza, have some light there. Middle way, not too tight, not too loose. Bye. Yes. One final question, if there is one somewhere else. Yoon, what are you doing here? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. You too. Any, anything else? Uh, we can close if there's no other question. Everybody wants to get to bed? Okay. Dedicate the merit. We'll dedicate the merit then. At the monastery.
so that we in every sentient being together can realize the Buddha's way. our Sangha families, friends, and visitors. Heal everyone who is unhappy, sick, or suffering, and fill them with light. 